Our gospel today strikes a note that is not often heard in the pulpit anymore. In the parable of Lazarus and the rich man, our Lord Jesus warns of judgment and of the reality of hell as the destiny of impenitent sinners. As C.S. Lewis wrote, the Christian religion is, in the long run, a thing of unspeakable comfort. But it does not begin in comfort. It begins in dismay. This dismay comes from recognizing that God is all holy and all good, and that, as St. Paul says, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That is the human condition. Awareness of sin is actually honesty and realism about God, about ourselves, and about the world in which we live. The doctrine of original sin tells us that human nature is flawed, and that it is not as God meant it to be at the creation. Our flawed humanity brings forth actual sin, and in our damaged state, we certainly can't pull ourselves up to heaven by our own bootstraps. The consolation of Christian faith comes by the awareness of Jesus Christ as our Redeemer, who has come to our rescue. As St. John says, We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the expiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Along with the awareness of sin comes an awareness of the brevity of human life. Abraham, in our Lord's parable, says that sin has caused a great chasm between the saved and the lost so that there can be no passing from one side to the other. Take note of our Savior's pointed words. Even if someone goes to them from the dead, they will not repent. Remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is risen. He has not only returned from the dead, but conquered death itself by his resurrection. We have more than Moses and the prophets. We have a Redeemer, who, as true God and true man, has broken the power of Satan and of death and of hell. The rich man in today's parable stands for mankind and for every human being. For we have all received countless blessings from God, even if we consider only the natural and human level. Infinitely greater are what the Apostle calls the unsearchable riches of Christ that is, the inexhaustible grace of our Lord Jesus. On the cross, says St. Peter, we were redeemed not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. In a sense, God's judgment is already taking place in this life, here and now. Already in the grace of Christ, we have a foretaste of, of heaven. Already, in the guilt of sin and unbelief and its destructive effects, we have a foretaste of hell. As St. Paul says, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. If we respond to the cross with repentance to God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. The call to repent and to believe the gospel is urgent. It is addressed here and now to every one of us, for death puts an end to the time within which one accepts or rejects the grace of God manifested in Christ. The letter to the Hebrews reminds us that just as it is appointed for men to die once, and after that comes judgment, So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting him. St. Paul summarizes in his second letter to the Corinthians the Christian awareness that we must render account to God, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive good or evil according to what he has done in the body. 
the New Testament speaks primarily of the final judgment that will take place at Christ's second coming, but it also speaks of a particular judgment that takes place at each person's death. We see this from the parable of the poor man Lazarus and from Jesus' words to the penitent robber on the cross. What is sin? The Penny Catechism defines it in these words, Sin is an offense against God by any thought, word, deed, or omission against the law of God. All sin offends God and damages our humanity, but some sins are more serious than others. St. John, in his first letter, makes the distinction between sin that is mortal and sin that is venial. In order for someone to be in mortal sin, three conditions must apply. Grave matter, sufficient knowledge, and full consent of the will. It is normally in sacramental confession, if reception of this sacrament is possible, that the guilt of mortal sin is forgiven. St. John says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It is particularly important in our times to recall the warning of Pope St. John Paul II that sin is primarily personal rather than societal. The Pope rejected the present-day tendency to, pr- to place blame for wrongdoing not so much on the moral conscience of an individual, but rather on some vague entity or anonymous collectivity, such as the situation, the system, society, structures, or institutions. Cases of social sin are the result of many personal sins. The real responsibility, then, lies with individuals. A situation, or likewise an institution, a structure, society itself, is not in itself the subject of moral acts. At the heart of every situation of sin are always to be found sinful people. Catholic doctrine takes with the utmost seriousness both the justice of God and his mercy, for in God they are one and the same, incarnate in Christ. Pope St. John Paul II spoke of this in a way that remains timely and necessary. It is obvious that such a generous requirement of forgiveness, even seventy times seven times, does not cancel out the objective requirements of justice. Properly understood, justice constitutes, so to speak, the goal of forgiveness. In no passage of the gospel message does forgiveness or mercy as its source mean indulgence towards evil, towards scandals, towards injury or insult. In any case, reparation for evil and scandal, compensation for injury, and satisfaction for insult are conditions for forgiveness. Christ our Redeemer speaks to us in the words from St. John's Gospel. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free.